Hey there, my name is Brandon Craft, and today I want to dive into one specific feature of the Yenabox plugin Storm. And that one feature, that one menu, is going to be the noise effector. Now for this tutorial, I will be using Apple Motion, but you can follow along with all of those other applications that Yenobox Storm is compatible with. As you can see, I already have Storm loaded up in Apple Motion, and the only thing I'm going to change before we jump into this noise effector is I'm going to head to the geometry. For the primitive, I'm going to use a torus. You can see our geometry did change over here, and I'm just going to set this quality to low for sake of playback. And the reason I'm using this torus is because I can show you some things with the noise effector if you're not familiar with fall off and things like that. We can see how two shapes, either a sphere or a plane, they can affect the geometry of this torus or any primitive for that matter. So by default, we have no effect. And let's go ahead and just do the basic one, the displacement fall off. As soon as I click on that, we're going to have a yellow line here. And this is actually a plane. If I come to the effect axis and I change this to the Y axis, I just want to show you this plane. And if I start rotating it, you can see that we do have this square plane and it's affecting this torus as we rotate it. I'm going to set that back to zero degrees and my effect axis back to X. So basically here's what's happening. This plane on the left hand side, we have pretty much that same torus that we saw that was being displaced. And I have not touched anything inside of fractal noise yet. The right hand side, you can see that we do have some fall off and this fall off can be controlled with this little slider here. If we lower this down, basically what that's going to do is as soon as it hits this plane, we had the displacement over here and then we have a perfectly undisplaced torus on the right hand side. Dragging that fall off up will help it blend to that other side. You can see now right around here maybe, you know, we have a lot of displacement and then it kind of blends into this torus where it's not displaced. Again, this is controlled with your fall off slider. Now if we want the right hand side to be displaced and the left hand side not to be displaced, quick adjustment, invert direction. And then if we rotate this plane, you can see that the displacement and the fall off are all being affected on this torus. And then one other thing to mention here too is the shape distance. We can move this plane in either direction, ultimately affecting the displacement and the fall off based on this noise effector setting. Now we have fall off shape. I did mention two shapes, a plane or a sphere. And then we have sphere inside and sphere outside. So now we see a crosshair, but really this is a sphere and I'm going to lower that radius down. And we can actually move this shape to the left, right, up, down, or whatever. And the reason why that's moving at an odd angle is because I have this shape rotation set to 20. Let's set that back to zero. And now we are here. I'm going to raise that radius up a little bit. And with sphere inside selected, this is the part of the object that is not being displaced, whereas the outside is being displaced. And to show you that more, if I lower this fall off down, you can see where we don't have displacement here and we do have displacement here. If we do sphere outside, that will reverse it. And with the effect axis set to X, if I rotate this, you can see how we are displacing this torus or again, any other primitive as we rotate this sphere around the torus. Raising that radius up a little bit more, adding some fall off for blending. And bear in mind, you can animate these items as well. Destination one, for example, in the animation menu. Down here, we have effector shape distance, rotation, and the sphere radius. Now we also have this twist angle. Let's talk about that. So going back to the noise effector, for the effect, we have roughness fall off as well. That is very similar to displacement, except it's going to affect the roughness of the fractal noise. But the other two options I want to talk about here are twist noise and twist primitive. Let me go ahead and select twist noise. And I'll tell you what, what I'll actually do is I'll reset this parameter. That way it resets all of these settings here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to dive back into this fractal noise and I'm going to lower this displacement down so that we see what looks like a donut, so to speak, but this is a three dimensional torus. Closing that up for the effect in the noise effector. Let's go back to twist noise and we have two options again, a plane or that sphere inside or outside with the plane selected. If we adjust this distance, we can see that we are twisting this torus and you can adjust those degrees, twist angle, you can animate this as well. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to come down here to color. Instead of based on depth, I'm going to do based on radius. And I'm going to do a simple gradient. That default blue and white is fine. Now for this twist exponent here. 
The Unobox user guide states that it sets the influence of the twist near the origin. Now, when I adjust this or when I slide it, you can see that we do have some more effects going on, but uh, it's just a slider that you can play around with to get that effect that you want with your noise. Let's try out a different axis. Let's try out a different shape. And adjusting that shape distance. So as you can see here, tons of effects, all animatable or keyframable. So what is the difference between twist noise and twist primitive? Now you did see the object did change. Twist noise will twist the mesh after the fractal noise is applied, whereas twist primitive, what I have selected now, this will twist the mesh before the fractal noise is applied. Like if I leave it right there and I go back to twist noise, it's the same three-dimensional object, but the actual mesh itself does look different. Let's check out sphere outside. Let's change our axis and let's change our distance. So as you can see here, tons of different effects using this noise effector. And there you have it, an overview of the noise effector various types of falloffs and twists that you can apply to any primitive in Yanobox's plug-in storm. Again, my name is Brandon Kraft. If you like this video, leave a comment, like, and subscribe. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.